Hi guys! As you know, the Tivor Tornado is a great 3D printer and is capable of producing quality prints straight out of the box. However, I recommend some changes that will improve the Tornado printer even more. This is my top 10 upgrades you must have in your Tivor Tornado. The Y-axis stepper motor is secured by this small plate. The issue here is that this plate is very thin and it's only secure on one side making it possible to flex. If you try to get your Y-axis belt tight, you will see the motor support bend slightly, causing the gears to have an angle different from the ideal 90 degrees. To prevent this, just print and install this simple support. This will maintain the motor always squared. Because this printer comes mostly built, you still need to check if everything is squared. Start by checking the distance from the vertical beams to the edge profile. And also the distance from the side profile to the center Y-axis beam. If you need to adjust, loosen the screws, adjust and retighten the screws. Next, and more tricky, is the X-axis. Several months ago, Ralph Moser spotted that the left plate has a different thickness compared with the right one. This difference causes the X-axis to be out of squareness by more or less a millimeter. For small prints, you probably will not see much differences, but with bigger prints, this will have a huge impact on your prints, especially if you print square-shaped objects or objects that interact with others. The solution is to add some shims between the front green plate and the spacers to move the left side of the X-axis forward. To do that, you need to buy some precision shims and install the exact amount you need according to your deviation. For the wheels with the eccentric nuts, you need to install the shims between the eccentric nut and the spacer just before the wheel. These will bring the plates to the same distance and the X-axis will be squared with the Y-axis. Having the ideal output current for the drivers is a must, so that your stepper motors can work at the design conditions and output the best performance. One of the most obvious problems when having a low current setting is getting layer shifts. This current setting can be checked and tweaked by adjusting the potentiometers on the board next to each driver. There is a formula and a procedure you can follow to adjust your drivers. For the printers that have the MKS baseboards, you can follow my other videos that explain how to do this. For the new printers that have the new MKS Gen L boards and the Allegro A4988 drivers, the procedure and values are the same. Just make sure you have the same RS resistor installed in each driver. If you have a different resistor value, the formula must be adjusted with this different value. Smoothers are these small boards with diodes that help to reduce the salmon skin pattern. You can find a video I posted some time ago explaining this in more detail. This was a sure fix for the boards equipped with the Allegro A4982 drivers, but some time ago, printers have been shipped with the HR4982 drivers instead, and for these, the smoothers have different results. Some HR4982 users reported that the smoothers worked perfectly and fixed the salmon skin. Some other users reported that they work but do not eliminate the salmon skin completely. And some other users reported that they don't work at all as they don't see any improvements. 
Nevertheless, for the price they cost, I recommend you to install them and try if they work or not. The most recent batches are equipped with the MKS Gen L boards, and since with these boards the drivers can be swapped, the users have the advantage to change the drivers entirely and install TMC ones. These drivers have some advantages, like improving the print quality, reducing the noise from the stepper motors and others. This is a very important upgrade that every owner must follow. Because of the back and forth movement of the heat bed, the bed cables will also move around, and this can cause issues related with fatigue or they can get stuck and get pulled out. In both cases, this can lead to malfunction or shorts. A strain relief will protect the cable from being pulled by the solder joints and reduce the chances of cable fatigue. You can either secure the cable to the closest bed screw simply using zip ties or print this model and install it. Both solutions will work and will keep your cable safe. The TiVo Tornado comes already with a small blower and fan duct to cool the filament as soon as it's out of the nozzle. This is very important to achieve good results when printing especially with PLA filament. However, there are much better designs that you can print and install. From all the fan ducts I tested, there are a couple of them that stand out from the crowd. The Petsfang fan duct and the fang with blower. Both have excellent results, so you should consider replacing the stock one with one of these. Check the video description for the links and watch my previous video for more details. The TiVo Tornado's heat bed comes equipped with this print surface. However, this surface is not the best choice you can get simply because most of the times the prints won't come off very easily and you end up using a scraper to take the print out. There's also the risk of getting bubbles between the print surface and the heat bed and if this happens, you need to take it out. There are many other better solutions on the market today that you can choose from. You can get print surfaces that are able to stick super well when hot and when cold, the print comes off by its own without the need of forcing it out. Some examples are the Memorabot, the Filiprint, and the Print Byte Plus. Being an AC heat bed means that you have your bed connected to the main power which can be 110 volts or 220 volts depending on the area you live in. This heat bed is awesome. It heats up very fast and has a much better performance compared with the DC models. However, many users have concerns about having the live wires next to the frame and getting electric shocks. To prevent that, you can install ground wires so that in case of one of the live wires gets loose and touches the metal structure, the system will be grounded and you will be safe. For more information on how to install this, check my video where I explain how you can do this. Bed leveling knobs for the heat bed adjustments are always a nice thing to have. They make the life so much easier when you need to adjust the bed leveling. These can be printed and installed so easily and will make this adjustment an easy thing to do. Check the video description for the link to get these out of Thingiverse. The Capricorn tube is an excellent upgrade over the stock PTFE tube. The Capricorn will improve the print quality thanks to its extremely precise internal diameter and lower friction. It can resist higher temperatures and also provides better results when printing with flexible filaments. So when printing with these type of filaments, the Capricorn upgrade is a must. 
I recommend you to get the XS version and not the TL version. And finally, the Micro Swiss Nozzle. The Micro Swiss Nozzle is a high performance nozzle much better than the stock one. If you want your printer to give you the best results, you need a nozzle that can follow your demands. And this is my top 10 upgrades you must have for your TiVo Tornado. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to follow me here on YouTube and my Facebook page. Also, if you want, you can support my work on Patreon as well. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!